she was accused of abusing drugs. Were you with Lisa McPherson when she died? We tried to talk with her for our last report, but she declined. The Scientologist denies she was practicing medicine with Lisa. When you read these, Dr. Johnson came in and checked on her. Dr. Johnson told me no more chloral hydrate. There's numerous references to Dr. Johnson supervising her medical care. Janice Johnson is an MD, but she is not a licensed physician in the state of Florida and was not a doctor for the right. church. On December 1st, Dr. Johnson writes something that sure looks like a medical report. It says Lisa's extremities are cool. She needs two liters of water when she wakes up. She'd given her an injection of magnesium chloride and squirted 1,000 milligrams of chloral hydrate, a prescription sedative, into her mouth. Chloral hydrate is a sedative that was prescribed by fellow Scientologist Dr. David Minkoff. But he never examined Lisa. The note says that she swallowed and fell asleep in the middle of a sentence. You can see that all of their efforts are to keep her asleep. Just keep her doped up and asleep. They believe that part of the reason that she was in the psychotic state that she was was because she'd had a lack of rest. They were trying to help her in a way that was consistent with her religious beliefs. The notes indicate that Lisa was being given, sometimes force-fed, a variety of medicines, herbal potions, and vitamins. We asked veteran forensic pathologist Dr. Klaus Speth to review the notes and Lisa's autopsy. Under the circumstances, I can say that this entire thing is bizarre, to say the least. Dr. Speth believes the variety and amount of treatments Lisa was receiving resulted in severe dehydration, and that led to the blood clot. For example, the high doses of vitamin B1 can produce insomnia, severe irritability, and headaches. Magnesium is a sedative, but it also produces severe dehydration. Chloral hydrate can produce hallucinations. It can produce severe damage to the kidneys. Dr. Spess says none of the treatments alone are necessarily dangerous, but the combination of all outside of a hospital without lab tests and proper monitoring are very dangerous. You're telling me that the combination of herbs and potions and prescription medicine that they gave her may have interacted to kill her. I would go beyond that. I wouldn't say may have. In fact, it. We have no other explanation for her condition. By November 29th, things were getting worse. The watch said she was quieter, but suspect it's because she's weak. On Saturday, December 2nd, she has tried to stand several times, but is not strong enough yet. There are large gaps in the handwritten notes. The most conspicuous are that there aren't any for the last two days of Lisa's life a time the medical examiner has speculated that Lisa may have gone into a coma. I'm telling you that we're not holding anything back. So they, they are not, if, they, if they're not here, okay. we, we have done a search in Florida, in L.A., anywhere that we could think of to look for any handwritten notes or documents. Before the release of the notes, church officials told us that Lisa had become suddenly ill on December 5th and was rushed to a hospital in a church van. We now know that Dr. Janice Johnson was driving the van. She drove 25 miles past four emergency rooms to get to a hospital in Newport Ritchie, where fellow Scientologist Dr. Minkoff was on duty. According to the notes, Lisa was dead on arrival. Laura Vaughn, a lawyer for Scientology you saw in Matt's report, told us that the church strongly disagrees with Dr. Speth's conclusions. She says that one must look at the totality of what Lisa ate and drank and re-emphasize that church members were trying to help Lisa. She added that the church has hired a number of prominent forensic experts and they are preparing reports on Lisa's death. Uh, uh, for police, it's a well-known phenomenon in uh, suicide. A frightening thought for thousands of parents and families whose loved ones could fall prey to cults like the so-called higher source in San Diego. It seems really normal. Now cults can spread their informational tentacles faster and more effectively than ever before. They're able to recruit to entice new members with just the touch of a computer key. The attraction of a cult such as this, experts say, can be immensely appealing to people in the 18 to 25 age range. And that's the prime target age for cult recruiters. An attraction that strikes fear into the hearts of loved ones. The quest for higher religious meaning will draw a troubled young person into a group that then 
completely supplants their earlier ties to family. You may lose touch with a child until it's too late. It appears that it's easy to influence young men and young women into this type of uh, act. The, the, they don't realize how final it is. New York Police Detective Thomas McKenna says a lot of the unanswered questions depend upon whether the cult's leader died in the mass suicide or whether he will lead others to a similar fate. Does he kill 39 people and not join them uh, and, and end it all? Or does he move on to others? Uh, it's a possibility that he has others. And according to cult expert Charles Strozier, this kind of secretive yet high-tech cult isn't easily exposed, nor can these kinds of tragedies be easily prevented. Many groups, like the San Diego group, are so quiescent and so unto themselves and so withdrawn from society that there's no indication that they've given evidence that they are uh, planning anything like a mass suicide. So how can anybody do anything to prevent it? One cult expert told us that the end of the millennium in the year 2000 is also an occasion when more cult activity could take place.